This is Switzerland and my trip to Zermatt and Gornegrat. This is my favorite area of the Alps and there's something to do for all different types of people. The hike I'm doing today can be done in many different ways. And there is a train running the whole way, so you don't even have to be fit to do it all. The trail I'm doing offers some of the best views in Switzerland and it can be done with very little effort, if that's what you prefer. And it all ends in my favorite Swiss hotel. My name is Frederick and these are my adventures. The way up to Zermatt is pretty by itself. A tip is that you arrive one day early, so you can jump on the first train in the morning, going up to Gornegrat. In Zermatt, only electrical vehicles are allowed, and even the public transport is electric. It's a very calm, peaceful, and enjoyable place to visit, and actually, this is my favorite place in the world. It's now the day after, and time to leave the hotel. I've added timestamps in this video so that you can pick and choose what you want to see. So if you're, for example, interested in this hotel, you can just skip to the end of this video. The train up to Gornegrat takes a bit less than one hour, but you'll be occupied looking at the scenery and trying to get those perfect photos. Now it's time to leave the train. So we just arrived to Gornegrat. We went all the way down from Zermatt down there, all the way up here. So down there, it's 1,600 roughly meters above sea level. And up here, we we're on 3,000 plus. So that difference makes me lose my breath instantly. It's behind me, behind you guys here. We have the observatory, Gornegrat, Gorner Glacier and everything, which we're heading to. But behind me, you can see Matterhorn, and that's where we're going to go in a little bit. We're just going to go on the side and just have this beautiful view, which you will see. But first, we'll head up there. Now, we're finally on the top of the Gornegrat. And in English, Gornegrat is Gorner Ridge. And that's a ridge that go over, uh, goes over here. Behind us, as you can see here, you have the Gorner Glacier. The mountains we have in the background, they're all above 4,000 meters. So you have some of the highest mountains, the highest peaks here in this area. And if you remember my other videos, on the other side of, of this mountain range here, you also have a lot of very, very high mountains. This video is taken from my trip between St. Bernard Pass and La Folie. I will put the link to this video up in the right corner if you're interested in this hike as well. This is probably my favorite, or it is my favorite part of Switzerland. So here in the background, it's just beautiful. It's the, the most iconic, I would say, um, valley in Switzerland. It's very well known. And in the background, over there, you have the Toblerone mountain and you've probably seen the, the pictures where people hold Toblerones up and you have that. So here in the background you have a hotel but this is not only a hotel. In the 60s they built these two um, observatories that you see on the top. So from just being a hotel they now also have observatories on top of this. And then you can also go, I don't know if you see it there on the top, but you can go over there to the Italian side, on the other, other side of this, this mountain range, because on the other side here you have Italy. And I'm just walking a little bit on this ridge just to show you, because this area you just saw over there, that's the area you usually hike up to. So from up here you see everything. You have the glaciers in the background here, you have the valley going down there, including Matterhorn, which is behind here now. So taking the train up is very easy. And from there, you can just walk around and see everything that I just showed you. So I took the 824 train. And if you take the 9 train, that's when everyone starts coming up here. It's packed. It's usually like really packed. 
then what you can do if you your stamina or whatever is not as strong then you can go on the ridge and that's what i'm going to do today to go down the valley because down there is where you're going to see the most amazing things it's beautiful up here but on the way down you get closer to the mountains and the pictures become even better As you can see, this is part of the Grand Tour of Switzerland. Plenty of people will take the train up and down to Gornegrat and not walk this path. But to be honest, that would be a shame in my view. If you take this easy path down, you'll see so much more than you can do from up there. And also, there are plenty of train stops along the way. And you can just go to one of those if you're tired. If I can recommend one thing, it would be to start walking down from Gornegra. You can see that we have it up there. Because once you go out, once you start going down, you have very nice vantage points where you can take further pictures. But also, I would argue this view from here is better than the one you see from the top. Because here you see into the glacier, the mountains around, and then you're kind of engulfed with these huge 4,000 plus peaks in the background. Going up there, you can do, if you're in a hurry and you just want to see it, if you're unable to do the hike, or if you're very uncomfortable with the, the, the altitude, because it can also make you incredibly tired. But look here, a bit further down, an additional vantage point. The hike that I'm doing today is 14 kilometers and it's going basically from the top there on 3,100 meters down all the way to Mater uh, Semat and uh, the city down there. And that's a drop of roughly 1,500 meters and it's just straight down. I have done this hike many times before, but I've done it uphill. And I prefer doing it uphill because it's better for your knees and you burn those calories as well because you're eating good food here and you have huge breakfasts. So let's see if we can get down here a little bit further out without falling. Look at that. Just perfect views. So this hiking here is incredibly simple. It's very well marked. It's one of the most touristy places in Switzerland, but there's a reason why it's so touristy. People go to the top of Europe in Jungfrau. I if I could pick one, I would go here. I'm gonna continue. I need to meet my friends a bit later in a restaurant. So, and that's a one o'clock and currently it's 10. So it's a little bit of time left until we get there. But we're gonna continue down this, just get closer and closer to the Matterhorn. Going to Zermatt and not do a bit of hiking would be a pity. This is one of the best places to hike in Switzerland, and they have so many different hikes, ranging from very easy to more advanced. Regardless of which hike you take, you're gonna have such nice views all over. To get up to the Kleiner Matterhorn, you'll take the highest large capacity gondola in the world. One of the rides you can take up there is the Crystal Ride, and this has a matte Swarovski glass floor and turns transparent once you hit 170 meters above ground. I almost cried when I did that ride. As you hopefully can see on the video, depending on if you go down or if you hike up, you're going to have different views. So if possible, I actually wouldn't say to only do one way, do both ways, because you're going to see totally different views unless you constantly go up and up and down. Then on top of this mountain there, that's where a lot of people go to train for when they're gonna climb either Mont Blanc or Matterhorn, just to do that snow hiking on the ridge, etc. So it's a great practice place. And here in the back, you now see probably 
the reflection, and that's Monterosa Hitta. So you can see exactly where it's located. And there, with a beautiful view outwards through this valley. As previously mentioned, I'm far from reaching the minimum required subscribers of 1,000, and almost 90% of you are not subscribed today. So if you enjoy this video, I would highly appreciate if you could press that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and it gives me that energy to continue making videos. And if you like the video, please show me by pressing the like button. It doesn't take much effort, but it really makes me happy. If you want more information about Zermatt, please ask me in the comment section. As always, I've done a lot more than I show in the video, so I'm more than happy to help you out. I think this will be the hike that most of you guys do here in Zermatt. This is, if you only have time for one hike, this is the hike, because it will show you everything that is around Zermatt. So it's the perfect hike. Um, and that's why most people do it. And that's why I want to show you this hike. Because most people do this. And they might also go over to the top over there. And then hike down the valley. Get a bit closer to the Matterhorn. But no one, <laughs> most people are not going to go up to, to the top of Matterhorn. The Matterhorn was one of the last alpine mountains to be summited and that was 1865. This first expedition ended dramatically, and only three out of the seven climbers survived the descent. And last year, my friend asked me if I wanted to join him. Where we're heading right now is Riffelsee. And you can see it down there. So it's one of two lakes right there. When you get there, you're going to see the reflection, we'll see in a bit. You see the reflection and then you have Matterhorn in the background. And if you take a good picture, you're going to get a, a, f a beautiful reflection in the background. Right by Riffelalpsee, there is a train station. So you can take the same train as you do up to Gornikrad, if you're unable to do the hike. And that way, you won't miss out. A couple of years ago, I never managed to see a Ibex, but the reason I'm a bit quiet is down there, you can see one. And it's looking at me right now. I'll turn you guys around, so I'm trying to stick you out there so you can see it. Give me a second. This video was filmed in 2021, when travel restrictions still existed. I also went here off-season, so that's why you see so little tourists. Down here, you see the lake that I spoke about up there. You can already see the tourists, even though they're not that many. But you see how Matterhorn is right behind it. And if you look at the reflection, you can actually see beautifully reflected it is. And in the water, you have some fish. So there's fish life that, that can be sustained in this layer right here. There's nothing special, special about this lake. Uh, I tried to figure something out, but uh, there's absolutely nothing special except, you know, the height, but there are plenty of lakes on this height. So the special thing is how perfectly made it is to take the picture right here. We are now getting down to the second lake, and that lake is also worth a visit. So if you take the train to this train station, and you go to this lake here, which I just showed you, you need to go there too. It's very easy, it's very short, and you see there are also plenty of people taking pictures there as well.
when you get to after these two lakes, once you see this yellow hiking sign with the different routes, you can either go that way, which most people went, because it's the, the direct way to Riffelope. But what I recommend and what I'm going to do myself is I'm going to walk on this side all the way on the ridge so that we get the views that we have on the other side of mountains all the way down and then we get as far down as we can to see Matterhorn from this side otherwise you have to cross the valley and get to the other side and then you get closer to, to the Matterhorn obviously if you get tired along the way here there are plenty of small little routes which you can just cut in and get to refill out as well but I think that this part here is stunning. I have some incredible photos from the past there. So again, walk the whole ridge down, sorry, the, the whole on, on the side, the whole way down here. Continue there. If you get tired, it's better to take a break because you should not be in a hurry. Just chill and walk on the side. Now we've come to the part where walking downhill is probably the prettier view. As you can see behind me, we walk towards Matterhorn all the way down. So we're gonna have that beautiful view for a very long time. On the other hand, looking upwards, there's literally nothing to see. But that's why you have to go both ways, rather than just one way. As you can see from here, we get a slightly different view because up there you have these massive glaciers. And then when we get here, it's just, it's the, the end of the glacier, but then you have more rocks, etc. So it's grayer. We have much more in the background, but it's a more rocky environment rather than the snowy environment you have up there. Nevertheless, really pretty. Now we're moving over to Riffelbag and that's, you have the valley on this side, which I'm walking towards where we just came. And we're going this way to the next valley. And over there, we're gonna have lunch. That's also, all of both of these obviously connect to Sermat, but it's just a little hill over mountain to cross. What I'm hiking right now, is a bit of an in-between hike where you don't necessarily see anything new, but it's a simple hike and it should not bother you too much. I said in the beginning of the video that we're going all the way down to the city, but actually I'm taking a detour to meet my friends at a restaurant. For those interested, this is basically where you're taking the path down to the city. But I'm continuing to the restaurant. I will skip through a lot of this. And if you're interested, you can always check my Sermat by the Winter Relax video. Because there, I basically walk the same route. Where I'm heading now is the other side here. So I have to cross this valley, which is going to be a bit cumbersome. But once on the other side, there's some, some really nice restaurants and I'm going all the way to the, the top one. So we'll see when we get there, but it's, you have Chevroni, which is in the white guide. And then this place is a spin-off. So supposedly it's, it's gonna be good, but let's see. We're on the other side now and I'm a bit tired because just ran for far distance but we're now heading up to the restaurant where we're gonna eat so before we get there we're just gonna walk through all these old buildings and everything is kept and restored so as you can see you have a different type of beauty on this side 
but nevertheless beautiful. But now I'll head up there. I finally made it, made it to paradise. So we have paradise right here. So all my friends are there waiting for me. And I'm half an hour late. I had to run here and it was horrendous. But look at this place. It looks incredibly nice. Just chill music, good food. Yeah. Good to see. Hello. Um, go sit with those who. Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hi, guys. On the way down, you have Chevroni. And as always, I'll link all these places in the description below. We spent a few hours enjoying the view and the local wine. So the sun is about to set on our way down the valley. Most of the way down looks fairly similar. And once you hit the trees, that's basically all you can see. That's one reason to take the train or cable car up and down. So if you're up here for a very short period of time and don't want to waste it, I would recommend you to take the train or a cable car. And now we've made it to our hotel. And I really love this place and I highly recommend it. This is my preferred hotel in the whole of Switzerland, and the owners are so nice. What you see here in the background is the end of Zermatt towards Matterhorn. It's right before the sundown, so unfortunately it's very hard to film towards the sun. Our apartment is right on the edge of the hotel. Down there you can see the main part of the hotel where I just came from. They also have this beautiful room, in case you want to stay on this side of the hotel while you don't have enough people to fill the whole apartment. This hotel has a different price in the winter versus the summer, but I'll link it below. And that was everything for this video. There are plenty of cool areas to explore in Zermatt, so please subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. This area of Switzerland is just so extraordinarily pretty. So I made a compilation of all the views in another video, which will come out shortly. Thanks for watching and goodbye.